Hi everyone, welcome to Kitabi Karens. I am Kritika. I hope you're doing well. A lot is going out in the world, some good and unfortunately most of it bad. So I thought that I'll share some happy recommendations with you. Starting with none other than it's Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. If you're not familiar with Trevor Noah, his work, his Netflix specials or his daily show, I'll highly recommend you to check out that first a little bit, if not his old craft, set of craft before you jump onto this book. It could be a personal bias for sure, but I'll give you a reason that when you know, when you're reading something or a bio, biographical or a memoir, if you know that person, how he talks, how he thinks, how he thinks, how does he frame sentences, how does he think, how, how does he switch between accents, it gets easier to read that person on text. I jumped onto this book after I have seen a lot of his work throughout different platforms and when I read it, I felt like he's narrating me his life story. It was such a good experience written, reading this book. Something admirable about writers who could make you laugh on text and not through a meme or a tweet. He's capable of making you laugh through a long, elongated text format, which I think is a commendable thing to do. I'll read out what is written at the backside of this book, which probably he himself or his team might have written. Trevor Noah was born a crime, not because he could answer back in five languages or because his mother threw him out, out of a moving car, not even because he accidentally burned down someone's house with a magnifying glass, but because this was South Africa and Trevor's mother was black and his father was white. He grew up, his childhood was all based in the backdrop of apartheid and it was actually illegal for his mother and father to be seen together because they belonged to different races. It was a damaged world, people doing some bad things in and around and he grew up uh, very beautifully, sprouted out like a kamanka pool from that uh, dirt through his sense of humor as his weapon and he pierced right through uh, some damaged places. He talks about, of course he's funny, he's narrating some hilarious life stories of his parents and grandparents and the neighbors that he was surrounded with. His mother's obsession with Jesus and how uh, the banter goes on, how he's trying to relate to it, uh, does he believe in God or does he not? He's trying to understand that, navigate that throughout his childhood. Of course we admire men written by women they are empathetic admirable affectionate they communicate well they listen well but here trevor gives us a chance to read a woman written by himself which is his mother and of course if you're reading his book you already admire him but i am sure that you will come out being in awe of his mother she is a blend of generously kind and savage person. It's difficult to somehow maintain that balance. She desperately wanted to have a child because she herself was going through some tough times. She lived a pretty restricted life, not by choice, but because of the time, era and the place she was in. So she wanted to give her child everything that she could not get. I'll read down a few lines. We tell people to follow their dreams but you can only dream of what you can imagine. And depending on where you come from, your imagination can be quite limited. His uh, choices that he made in friendships and how crucial they were in shaping him or <clears throat> setting the course of his life. He could have easily gotten into some bad groups, made some bad choices, and he decided to step away. The book is very heartwarming. Uh, it'll make you cry in a little bit of places, but overall, it's such a such a happy read. He's one of those person who could accept the harshest of things, obs or more observe the harshest of things in life, and present to you in very gentler words. I think if you insult someone, you will be very poetic. And I hope you too learn a little bit from his life. The second book that I want to talk about <clears throat> is A Short History of Tractors in Ukrainian. Extremely funny, outstanding book. This is, uh, I just picked it just because of its title. I knew nothing about this book. A very 
a different book cover. There are two sisters who have a lifetime feud. Their mother have passed away. They had a difficult one of the sisters had a difficult situation uh, equation with the mother as well. And now they are trying to protect their father from this new woman who have walked into their lives. And they they are quite skeptical about that uh, she could be a gold digger or she might uh, be just in this equation with her, their father because of the money. The book has some hilarious conversations, some family banter, uh, very witty and sometimes dark humor and uh, it will definitely make you laugh. Do give it a try. Do not read any reviews before. Just go with your instinct and uh, don't read much into the story what the book is about and not telling you purposefully but you will surely like it. The third book that I want to talk about, not a funny one, but a very sweet one, uh, an optimistic one. It will fill your life with hope. It will help you ponder upon the bigger picture of the life. Chodi chodi cheese to chalti rehti hai, but uh, books like these remind us how life could be brutal to some people in different ways, more than we can imagine. And they have a different outlook towards that. The book is called Wonder by Arja Palacio. And uh, it is a story about a 10 year old boy called August. He has some facial differences. And because of that, his parents decide to homeschool him since, uh, till fourth grade. And uh, the first day he steps into his school is in his fifth grade. And he's all set to enjoy the school life, make friends, go out on picnics, etc, etc. But he's faced with some difficult things where people stare at him a few seconds more than they should where some of them of course bully them and he has a difficult time going through that uh, the book is a family book the book uh, it is narrated uh, through the perspective of august a 10 year old boy which i always find very heartwarming when the book is narrated uh, by a younger child uh, it gives out more empathy and you start looking at the world how a 10 year old might perceive just on their little legs walking around in this huge big bully of a world and they're trying to cope up with everything. He knows that the other person might look them differently which is very heartbreaking and uh, surprising to see. This is August saying, it's okay, I know I'm weird looking, take a look, I do not bite. Hey, the truth is, if a Wookiee started going to school all of a sudden, I would be curious. I would probably stare a bit. And if I was walking with Jack or Summer, I'd probably whisper to them, Hey, there's a Wookiee. And if the Wookiee caught me saying that, he'd know I wasn't trying to be mean. I was just pointing out the fact that he is a Wookiee. His mother says to him, There are always going to be jokes in the world, Wookiee. She said, looking at me. But I really believe, and Daddy really believes, that there are more good people on this earth than bad people and the good people watch out for each other and take care of each other the book is a gentle reminder that uh, not everybody is street smart or savage going out navigating into this world they incline towards the kinder side towards the humbler side and it is the responsibility of others the good people who surround them to take care of them and not let the world snatch away that innocence from them. There are some books that make you want to be a good person, make you want to be a good human and uh, this book is that. Also, one of the books whose film adaptation was equally beautiful to watch by the way. Read these books in any order as you like and I'm sure you'll have a good time. Do tell me if you like them and comment your favorite book below. I'll see you next time. Thank you.